verses 20, 11 through 13. Moses raised his hand. This is uh, after the people whining about water and uh, discussing their need for water again. This has happened multiple times. They've always found a need. You got to understand they're wandering through the wilderness, allowing God to lead them. And of course, God recognizes their needs, but rather than pray about it, they just complain. And finally, Moses goes to the the Lord with it. It's like oftentimes the last place we turn to is the first place we need to. And that's God. And that's the way they carried on as well. So Moses was commanded in the earlier verses, we see this, and this plays an important part, to speak to the rock. And water would gush forth. And then people kind of encouraged him to hit it. Moses raised his hand and struck the rock twice with his staff. Water gushed out in abundance, and they all drank men and animals. So their need was met, but by means of disobedience. And he spoke to the rock as he told to. It would have been obedience, and the need would have, the water still would have came out. Sometimes we can make what God wants to happen happen by force, and that's what Moses did here. Rather than be obedient and be willing to do what he said, he forced the situation to happen. And oftentimes we can do that because of a lack of patience. Sometimes even a lack of faith mingles in it because our faith ain't as strong as it should be. And sometimes the pressures of things get to us. And the people who. Yes. Yes. And it still came out. That's a great point. That even he could have, because of disobedience, it could have been even drier uh, but the water still came out and that's one thing we got to be careful about because we do not want to force doors open because we see how Moses suffers because of it he don't go to the promised land and there's cause of effect of what happens when we force doors open and usually burnout is one of them because we ain't meant to do that and God ain't leading us to do it so we burn out and because we, we don't have that strength from him but oftentimes they end up being failure eventually because he ain't leading it and we are so Moses being a man of God would realize after he did this and would later turn his heart back but he'd still mess out of a promise so it wouldn't affect so it wouldn't be like because he turned back, the people wouldn't be messed up. Wouldn't avoid the promised land altogether. It'd still be the next generation. And I say, if Moses wouldn't have turned back to God, it would have trickled down the line further, and maybe it would have been the generation after that would have been to the promised land. Because the way we are affects the next generation oftentimes. Verse twelve, but. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, You did not trust me so far as to uphold my holiness in the sight of the Israelites. Therefore you will not lead this assembly into the land I'm giving them. So he's telling them they ain't going to lead them into it. This would be the job for Joshua. But he would lead them. Uh, I say God knew that Moses was going to turn back to God. And if he wasn't willing to, God would have put somebody else in leadership role. You know, it ain't so much, because we all make mistakes, we all slip and fall, even those in roles of leader. It's what we do after we slip and fall. Moses may have did this reactionary because of the people. Most likely the way that God deals with it, that's exactly what happened. But that showed that under the pressure, Moses would finally cave to the people, which wasn't a role that needed to be in the promised land. Because then many of the, they wouldn't have conquered, I believe, as much, if anything, under that type of leadership. But we, and, our, uh, and leader, we're the same as leaders. Leaders are just looked under a microscope. They're going to fall. It's how they react when they fall. Do they got a pride? Because many who don't need to be leading have a pride once they fall and belittle what they did 
try to look around at that rather than fess up and humble themselves and admit that they were wrong. And that's the attitude God wants, to admit that when we were wrong and turn back to Him. And I believe that's the type of heart Moses had, which is why he was still the leader. And as long as the leaders are willing to turn back to God, because we're all going to mess up. Nobody's going to be in a role of leadership. There ain't nobody perfect but Christ. So expect perfection out of them is ridiculous. But what do they do when they mess up? Do they allow it to bring them closer to God? Do they allow them experiences to help them be a leader? Because if they do, then they should still be a leader. If they've turned from it. And I think unless they turn from it, they ain't going to learn them things anyway. Verse 13. Such were the waters of Meribah, where the people disputed with the Lord, and through which His holiness was upheld. So His holiness. His, and this is kind of what... Moses kind of didn't show reverence to God by disobeying Him. So this is what it's talking about, God's holiness. We all fall short of keeping God's holiness, filling His will. So none of us truly deserve going to the promised land, but we have grace. You know, not saying Moses didn't have it. We see what Moses has done and some of the things he did. And yes, Moses was shown grace too. But... Only by Christ are we made holy. 